Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 Long War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken, we're playing Legendary Iron Man difficulty of the better one version of uh, this mod. And it is time for a smash and grab mission. As mentioned at the end of the last mission, we're going to go in with a pretty much team of newbies. Um, Zoe Wildcard Brown is going to lead them, first lieutenant. The rest is corporals or lower, but we got a decent Ali mixed team. Shinobi Sharpshooter, a Grenadier, an Assault for Frontline, Combat, a Specialist, and another Spark. This is our Prime Spark, so uh, that's the black one. Hopefully we are going to aim for two to three um, crates. Maybe we can get four out of it, and that's pretty much it. We don't need, uh, need more than that. We're trying to kill all of the enemies and then just get out of here. Let's go. And we have just landed since a long time. That's the first time that we're going to see Losts. Now that I finally Advent removed the, uh, the conflict of uh, the mods that were slowing down the performance of Long War, I'm very interested to see whether or not that also has an inf uh, impact on the Losts. Good. The first crate is pretty far over there. Got it covered. Might as well take the high ground. Yeah, we we have we're not in a hurry. With no time pressure whatsoever, do. so we don't need Oscar Mike. Already there. I'm all over it. Good. Our rookies are all moving to high ground, as mentioned beforehand. In uh, the indoor areas here are empty. No, none of the enemies spawn in there or patrol through them. So it's an easy way for us to get a bit more, uh, yeah, a bit more movement range without putting ourselves in danger. Moving to designated position. We're being careful. I don't want to. I don't want to disregard the danger here. On it. Our scout is going to be Wildcat. Double time. Salt is going to be the frontline fighter. Bishop can move all the way through here. No clue why the window just broke. No need to ask twice. And Ariel also follows. So, with only 12 enemies in such a large map, we're unlikely to immediately find and trigger a pack. And we also are well advised to really go as close as we can to the target location. There's a nice little high ground over here. So, probably moving up here and taking the high ground is the right play. Moving in with our scout. I'll continue to keep the scout on the ground. Move, move, move. 
On the other hand, our Mac could go all the way over here. Grenadier moves over. Sniper moves over because we can relatively stand in the open because there is no pack even close to our location and they would need to sprint into us to even be able to spot us out plus we know they are actually over here there's a car for potential high cover over there Before we go in, let's actually use our scout. Headed there now. Understood. Moving out. Okay. So since we're still not seeing anyone. Pretty damn sure that we can move up without getting exposing ourselves. The mech can move up to here. That's far enough inside of the building to not be spotted out. Grenadier moves over. Sniper is the one that should take the positions on the balcony afterwards. And yeah, we're seeing differences in movement speed now. So we will probably need a turn to get everyone situated and back in, in their position. Whenever the camera kind of moves to a fixed point, that is a creepy, uh, that is pretty creepy, and that usually only happens when you have a chosen, but they wouldn't be here on a smash and grab mission. We're moving closer. We're definitely not going to attack them this turn. Why why would we? Instead we're placing our sniper in position. Grenadier. The Grenadier potentially needs to get a bit closer. Heading there now. The mech, on the other hand, could use the high ground. Still well out of uh, line of sight. And Ariel takes full cover position, doesn't necessarily need to shoot, has a couple of other abilities as well to support the team. Yeah, we're looking at, uh, matter of fact, a few overwatches here.
And it starts becoming interesting because that's yet another pack. We don't have Bladestorm with her. Hmm. Well, difficult decision. Are we already triggering them or not? Gotta kill the two gren uh, the grenadier, um, the rocketeer over here. The rest should be fine. We could also go for a good old Overwatch play, essentially getting even closer. Which means now is the right timing for Oscar Mike. Going into a position where we can. No, we don't. We're definitely not going to do that. That'll be a third pack, and I don't want to trigger another pack. But since we have such a low detection radius, we can position ourselves over here. The drone will most likely spot us out. It's another good position. The sniper will stay up there. Even has the drone in direct line of sight. That's good because then he can take an overwatch shot. He does not yet have the ability to take overwatch shots based on based on uh, squad side. Putting Ariel in a good position. And I think this here, with high ground, isn't bad. The mech has no cover anyways. Might as well take the advantage of the high ground position. Okay. So that's one good overwatch, another pretty decent overwatch. I think his overwatch will also be fine. Not sure if we already want to do command. Yeah, probably not for an overwatch. I mean, we could give a command over here. We might as well. Alternatively, hmm. nah. Let's let's keep her here because she can mark the crate. We're going to be fine. We are going for the additional Overwatch. Overwatch up here. Overwatch here. And that's five overwatch. 
and hopefully we're going to be detected. They're moving in an excellent position. That is not optimal. But we can still see a couple of them and the drone should spot us out. But it doesn't do its job. <sighs> what a lousy drone. I mean, we could go and hit all three of them to start things off. Okay, if we were to do that, what else do we want to do? Um. Let's use a protocol for Bishop here. And we can still haywire protocol the drone. I don't think that we need an overwatch trap. Matter of fact, I think we're more efficient without an overwatch trap. This here should hit all three of them. And the enemy begins to panic. I love it. Good. For proper hygiene, let's get an evac down. It's only a 36% chance that we're taking it over. That here, on the other hand, it's a pretty decent chance that we could kill him. Theoretically flankable, if this guy moves over. Could position ourselves here. Also flankable if he moves to here. So our biggest threat is currently sitting back there. Let's get rid of this heavy gunner. Doesn't hurt to mark his supply. Move over here. And we could pick both of them up with a grenade. Need to be careful because there was another pack over here. I'm going.
So I guess the question is that grenade here is definitely going to kill someone, but is it going to kill both? On the other hand, something that's exploding outside here, is that going to kill the guy upstairs? The explosions in Long War are weird because co uh, cover is so strong. I think that that should kill both of them. But then again, only kills one. Good aerial here, run and gun. Theoretically, we can, could go for the trooper. Moving to here. Well, that's not a problem yet. It's a 50-50 chance to kill him. I'll take it. 94% shot misses, which is unfortunate to say the least. First and foremost, get this guy here. Okay. We know the mech is still there. Kill a few of the losts, by the way, the losts um, create no more latency. Look how it works without essentially just uh, essentially legging down. Okay, if we reload, that would be the end of the turn. We could shut it down, 70% or 40% take control of the unit. I think for now we're shutting it down. Not even that worked. That's the longest potential route that I can charge. And the longer you charge, the more uh, Flichette is going to deal as potential damage.
Getting rid of the Dasher. I mean, I don't want to be in the middle of all of this here. So we're probably just going to retreat a tiny bit. To get a better position. And I was right, the Chosen is here. See, the little camera twinkle gave it away. Can summon Advent Troopers. Can enter Overwatch. Triggers Overwatch uh, when you... Oh, it doesn't trigger Overwatch when he moves, okay? But easy to hit from high ground. Well, probably not going to kill him. We don't even have uh, mind shields, which is dangerous when you fight against him due to his mind control. And like I said, we're just going to mark some supplies and be out of here. There's another mech over here. Holy... These areas suppressing them like a boss. Like a boss. That's pretty nasty. How do they dare doing that? Oh, come on, don't stun him. <sighs> that is really bad because it'll take turns to get him back. All right. There we go. Overwatch removed, bitch. Got our three crates. Theoretically, could get another one over here. Let's start with our sniper. A couple of hundred percent shots. That's one. And another one. And another one. Love it. One of my favorite parts with the uh, loss. Oh boy. After seeing how flawless everything runs, just how many, uh, how high the frame rates are, I just got to apologize for the 70 missions and specifically the lost event that I put you guys uh, through. It sucks if you think about it. If it wouldn't take so much work, I would probably even consider re-recording it. In hindsight, pretty embarrassing. Um, frame rate and I really can't blame anyone other than myself for it okay so if I was to run over here that probably would not trigger well let's see I mean, it's a bit of a long shot. <laughs> Certainly not the most straightforward. Uh, I figured that might happen. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah, baby. Let's kill the drone. <laughs> yeah, that was barely a hit. Okay, but we still got... 66% chance to kill it. There we go. We do not have lightning reflexes yet. This here hopefully triggers the overwatch. Mac Longbow, very dangerous. We also got another soldier over here. Going in for the kill. So being just a tiny bit greedy here. We are marking the supplies because I know that I can slug shot him without an aim penalty. Nice. Time for overdrive. Okay, that's good, that's good. Keep it going, one more hit. Down to one HP. Our mech should be strong enough to withstand the blow. And luckily, there are still lost. Left over. Spectral zombies. And last but most certainly not least, the loss. Go for the mech. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Hilarious. Got ourselves the fourth crate. points of damage I absolutely like, like the helix gun. Mechs are so strong. If you play long war, as soon as you can uh, research them, I would recommend you to do so. My experience so far with them is extraordinarily good.
Let's stay somewhat near to our evacuation zone. We don't need to go anywhere fancy. Got another crate over here. We had 12 enemies. We killed a pack of, like, what, one, one drone? Uh, three soldiers here, two soldiers here, so that's six. Uh, then we triggered another pack, which was a mech plus one. That's eight. So there's another pe uh, pack somewhere out there. At least I've proven myself right. Let's mark the supplies. And we're going to go for full cover. Maybe we can grab the last um, crate over there. The Vipers have a pretty high aim, that is clearly a modification from the normal XCOM 2. Uh oh Don't mind control. My brethren may have fallen for your transparent tactics, but you will find I am no ordinary child of the elders. The chosen is in position. Time to put it down. Hmm. Okay. Well in two turns we're going to get her back, so that's not a problem. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a problem overall. Really don't like where this is going. Moving over here, off cover, not perfect, but at least in range to do this. That hopefully spawns another swarm of lost. Very good. Because that will give the enemies a lot to do during their turn. Let's let's actually wait for a second here. Time for a few shots from up here. Okay, we're getting rid of the dashers. I want to I want the majority of all of the losses to to stay intact, so we're we're just leaving them there. The dashers need to go, clearly. And we got a protocol for whomever 
is going to be the last men. I think moving over here we'll position ourselves in a pretty decent spot to be shot at, but not completely overrun. Let's see if we can kill the Viper. Fortunately, just a grazing shot, but that's okay. We can still finish it. Check it before you get too close. Hmm. I prefer reloading in this specific uh, case. St steadying the weapon isn't bad, but reloading isn't bad either. Bishop takes the 8 protocol. We're not going to get another crate. We got 5. And got punished for our greed. Oh no, wait a second. We did not get punished for our greed. What am I even talking about? More greed. Let's mark the supply. Putting ourselves into full cover, far enough away so that the shinobi cannot just charge in. Let's hope that the warlock just stays back there, doesn't join us, because I really don't want to fight him. Yep, Warlock stays back. Yeah, and the Chosen are doing their job. One more turn until mind control runs off. Going for full cover over here. We don't want to hurt our own operative, so we're not going to go do any overwatch moves. Probably not triggering another swarm of loss. We're not. We haven't triggered them enough yet. Yeah. It's two more steps until it would have been triggered. Let's continue and give the XP over to our mech. Good, I want to overwatch, but I don't think that we can actually do that. Instead, let's just step a little bit further back, because we can... Our mind-controlled operative also can't reach us this turn. Next turn, the disorientation will... no longer be there. Might as well steady the weapon. Good to go. And if you can't steady your weapon, hunker down. Set. 
Yeah, Bishop just is nothing. It's fine. There are the spectral zombies. And all things considered, that mind control went pretty well. And thanks to our early evacuation. This is Firebrand. It's time to go. Shit, we can't get out of here yet. Mm. Oh wait, oh I could have no, I couldn't. We don't have um, revival protocol yet. So it's one more round. Stomp, stomp, stomp. So I get a badge or something. All right. You know, I mean, theoretically, we could hit him, right? Just saying, I mean, we're not in the worst position. Might as well start to poke him a little bit. Shield is removed. Nice little slug shot. Not yet 100% convinced about the slug shot, to be honest. But okay, whatever. Good, and we are out of here. Let's trigger his overwatch. Oh no, he did not even overwatch, my bad. We do not have another grenade left over, so no cover removal from our side. 0% chance to hit, so we're just getting out. Very small hit chances now. I was hoping to maybe remove the cover. Certainly not killing him with grazing shots, that's for sure. Yeah. No chance to kill him. Heading to that location. 
And not that it matters too much. But let's get out of the mission with full health. The time for recovery is being calculated based on the maximum damage that you've taken and not based on your final hit points when you leave the mission. So we got five crates. The Warlock certainly was too much to deal with and we almost killed 40 enemies. So I would say decent mission it was okay. And my favorite part, five promotions. Unfortunately, Bishop's the only one who did not get a promotion. Good, we already have Slugshot. I mean, I don't want to go for a stun, stunner build. I think we're going to go for really more of this Raider sword build. I want to give it a try and see how we're doing. Slugshot didn't fully convince me so far. So might as well go with Trench Gun now, which is a cone based attack. I like the idea of, a, of giving him a smoke for free. That is essentially an extra equipment slot. Costs only 10 and smoke grenades are awesome. Good, we got them good ground and death from above. We wanted to continue with Lone Wolf for her. I like the idea that she cannot get crit, resilience and formidable. Wow, she has pretty decent abilities. Specifically defensive abilities. Got himself rapid deployment and high uh, high ground, or they have good ground. Um, I think I think we might want to. I mean, those both were fine. Getting the heavy ordinance was good for. An, extra damaging grenade um, we might want to really go for the support for the support grenades here blue screen bombs isn't that bad I mean, Formidable is clearly the best choice here because it makes you survive uh, more likely. Um, but we wanted to test other builds and I think we I want to test the blue screen bombs. Um, not sure if we go for denser smoke. Uh, that might, you know what, that might not be the worst idea ever. That one is really good. I like the sting effect here. So yeah, so we're probably going with blue screen uh, bombs. Not sure about the dense smoke yet, but sting grenades afterwards, then salvo. And probably full kit. Ever vigilant is good. I'm thinking about if we want to go for evasive, which is, in my opinion, still uh, still better. He doesn't have a heavy gun, so let's go for evasive. Uh, I mean. Revival Protocol is so essential. Comet Protocol. I never understood why people like it so much. It's okay. Don't get me wrong. 
but certainly like not the best ability that has ever been invented. While this here I can see so much application for it and you get two, ab uh, two of uh, these just for free. This one here I can certainly see how there is uh, there is definitely an appeal with interfering. And then essentially letting her get... I mean Trojan is good. But medical protocol is so much better. Uh, it's difficult to go for a different build to be honest unless you do have an additional support which we could do then this year is essentially not a typical support but she's just an offensive character and if we were to go for an offensive character without any kind of support um, then I would probably go for sentinel plus covering fire essentially making her an overwatch machine. Trojan is good. Um, interference not better than uh, covering fire if you go for the overwatch route. Having resilience certainly helps. Sentamars helps even more because then she has strong weapons. Uh, then we would go Sentinel plus covering fire into Trojan to properly hack. I can, I could see that one with a Grenadier together, but I can also see this one here to be super helpful with the Overwatch. Fault safe is good. Full override is good. Capacity Discharger is very good. I mean, those here are awesome. Trojan isn't bad either. Kill zone plus all of these certainly is good as well. I mean, just giving her so many Overwatch shots and even more and more and more. I don't think that you have a magazine um, that is large enough. Yeah, let's make her an aggressive kind of um, hacker, so uh, plus Overwatch. So we would go for Sentinel covering fire, Trojan, Ever Vigilant. Although the jury is out whether or not you would then want to. Anyways, I, I'm just not looking at the healing tree. Pretend it's not there. It's a pretty good tree though. Um, yeah, we go forever vigilant and instead of cool under pressure I like fa failsafe because there is no more uh, reason why you wouldn't uh, take a hack. Uh, low profile plus center mass. I like suppression because it fits the whole profile of the overwatch quite well. So she could suppress and essentially continue overwatching. Um, full override, yes, yes please. Yeah, serial and uh, circle fire is not that necessary. But getting essentially center mass and suppression or center mass and low profile, that is really good. And resilience, not but without a doubt, that is a good ability as well. So, very long story, but we finally got there. She's a normal skilled um, or a normal build character, so we're going for Bladestorm. Or clearly the best option and, and at least in my opinion and with those three abilities and there is a hacking PCS for 11 hacking which means if we are now looking at our soldier who is supposed to become quote-unquote the new hacking master 
think it was her, right? Yeah, Sentinel. She got plus seven hacking. Let's give her an expanded magazine at least. And a Gremlin Mark II. Just we built one beforehand, so might as well give her that if she focuses on hacking and that's what she does. Then she should be good at it. We're giving her alloy pl uh, plating instead. And if she really uses her gun quite a lot, might as well make sure that she can penetrate armor. So it's a very different um, way of playing the support. And she's no longer like really a support. Which means we need probably more um, medkits. Elsewise, we're going to have a problem. Thinking about going for Shadow Keeper, I like the idea of a high quality weapon. And there we go. We got almost 200 intel, so we can certainly expand soon. Shit, what just happened? Oh, I shouldn't click that fast. Let me double check. Yep, that was the training of one of the rookies was done. No, one of uh, one of the um, the leadership training of one of them was done. How about we continue with a Shinobi? I like Oscar Mike incoming, definitely Jammer, very useful ability. Can't really remove the negative traits from anyone at the moment. And let's continue. Good. This was, I think, the next mission. Oh, yeah, that was the mission which we wanted to boost. Prevent a resistance data leak. And boy, boy, we're going to have a lot of enemies here. Operation Steel Hand, but that's going to happen in our next episode when we are taking on the aliens once again. Thank you for watching, guys. If you like what you've seen, leave a comment and a like uh, down below. It helps the channel and shows me your appreciation, and it takes you only a couple of seconds. Thank you so much. Have a great day, and see you in the next mission. Bye-bye.